This video provides a quick review of the measures of central tendency, including mean, median, and mode, variation and dispersion, range, quartiles and interquartile range, sample variance, standard deviation, and the normal curve, as well as the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Before we begin, here's a quick review of symbols we'll use in this video. We will also use the abbreviation IQR for interquartile range. The mean is the average or balancing point. To find the mean, find the sum of all the values divided by the sample size. Here's a simple example of calculating the mean of the age of several participants in a study. The sigma is the sum, and the x-bar is the sample mean. After adding the values together and dividing by the number of values, 8, we arrive at our mean, 23.25. We can construct means of binary variables. The mean of a binary variable represents the percentage of ones. The mean is affected by extreme values, which is why we often look at means in conjunction with medians to understand how the data are distributed. In this example, the mean of the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is calculated by adding the values together to make 15, then dividing the values by 5. The mean of this group is 3. However, if the values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 10, the mean shifts to 4. The median is the middle value of the data. In this example, we have seven different ages. To find the mean, we first order them from smallest to largest and then locate the value in the center. However, if we have an even number of observations, median is computed as the average of the two middle values. The median is not impacted by outliers. Here, our median of the five values is three. If we add the value 10 to the set of values, our median is still three. The mode is the value that occurs most frequently. It is only useful when we have some values clustering together. In this example, the mode is 9. There may be no mode, or there may be several modes. There is no single measure of center that is best. If the data are normally distributed, then mean is used. However, if data are not normally distributed, the median is a better measure. Often we use both to understand the underlying structure of the distribution. There are several measures to examine the spread of the data. They include range, percentiles, interquartile range, and variance or standard deviation. The range is the difference between the largest and the smallest value. This histogram shows a minimum value of 15 and a maximum value of 94. The range is 94 minus 15 equals 79. Another measure of spread is the value of each quartile. We take the total number of data points we have and divide them into four parts. The value corresponding to the endpoint of each part is the quartile value. The interquartile range is the difference between the value at the third quartile minus the value at the first quartile. The first quartile, Q1, is the value for which 25% of the observations are smaller and 75% are larger. The second quartile, Q2, is the same as the median. 50% are smaller and 50% are larger. Only 25% of the observations are greater than the third quartile. Let's take the age values 15, 35, 49, 65, and 94. The first quartile is at 35. This means that 25% of the participants are below age 35. Likewise, 25% are above 65 years old. The interquartile range is 65 minus 35 equals 30 years. Sample variance is calculated as the average of squared deviations of values from the mean as shown here. We square the differences from the mean to provide equal weight to observations below the mean versus those above the mean. Because we square the difference, values that are further away from the mean get higher weight than those close to the mean. Standard deviation is the most commonly used measure of variation. It shows the variation around the mean and has the same units as the original data. It is calculated by finding the square root of the variance. Here's an example of the standard deviation using age data. Note that sample standard deviation is represented by the symbol s. x bar represents the sample mean. The standard deviation is an extremely useful measure. It tells us how close or far apart data are from the mean. The higher the standard deviation, the greater the spread of the data. Here in red is an example of a moderate standard deviation. You can see that the data is spread pretty evenly. The purple shows a low standard deviation, in which the data is concentrated near the middle. The blue example shows a high standard deviation, where the data is concentrated on the outside. These formulas are important to know well. While software can compute these for you, it's important to know how it's done using simple numbers. Whenever you work with data, you'll have variables that have a center and spread. A very useful rule to know is that no matter what the shape of the distribution, 75% of values will lie within two standard deviations of the mean, 
while 89% will lie three standard deviations from the mean. So if someone gives you just these two pieces of information, you can make some predictions on where a new data point will lie. However, what's even better in statistics is knowing that for large samples, data are distributed symmetrically and follow the bell curve. The 68-95-99.7 rule states that 68% of the area of a normal curve lies within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% of the area lies within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of the area lies within three standard deviations of the mean. This rule works for all normal curves, no matter their shape. That concludes our video on measures of central tendency including mean, median, and mode, variation and dispersion, range, quartiles and interquartile range, sample variance, standard deviation, the normal curve, and the 68-95-99.7 rule. <laughs>